Hello, my name is Marisela Cruzeman. I work with the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs, and I'm here to interview Marco Bracamontes, who is a curator of the exhibit in the City Hall Tunnel, and the title of the exhibit is The Birth of Mexico's Oil Industry. How are you, Marco? Very well, Marisela. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for being here with us. Can you give us a brief description of this photographic exhibit? The Birth of Mexico's Oil Industry is a collection of approximately 45 images, including photos, maps, and other uh, documents related to the early years of Mexico's oil industry. That goes from 1900 to 1938, when the industry was expropriated by President Lázaro Cárdenas. The images depict the uh, field work of uh, you know, some of the major companies that started ex exploring and, and producing oil in Mexico those years. Uh, primarily, the work of Edward Dohini, the uh, oil man from California, who came to Mexico to explore in 1900. And in 1904, he found an oil field that was actually profitable. The first profitable oil well in Mexico was uh, Ebano Dos in the state of San Luis Potosí very close to Tampico, which was the port where the oil was transported out of the country. That was 1904. So uh, that company, you know, Mr. Uh, Edward O'Hini's company became the Huasteca Petroleum Company, one of the largest fully integrated companies uh, probably in, in America that explored, produced, marketed, mm -hmm. transported oil throughout the continent. I always, you know, um, say that uh, looking back uh, in history gives you some tips to you know look forward into the future so yes this is a reflection uh, onto something that happened almost a hundred years ago but then again you know it, it, it highlights the collaborative effort of you know people from all over the world exploring you know the entrepreneurial spirit that it takes to build something so important like the oil industry and uh, now it's a different time it's a different century now um, you know we you know the world has changed a lot there's a lot of experience the mexican oil is still belongs to the nation still belongs to the people of mexico it's just a different uh, approach to exploration and production so this show depicts some of the key moments in in that production which was very important. 1921, Mexico became the second largest producer of crude worldwide behind the United States. That's pretty amazing. There's some images that depict, for example, the oil field called Cerro Azul, which was the largest oil field, the largest oil well in history. You know, this was drilled by the Huasteca Petroleum Company again, and it's recorded in history as some of the major one of the major pr producers of crude. Uh, there's also images of uh, Potrero de Llano, which was an oil field by the Aguila Petroleum Company. Let me ask you about the Aguila, because I remember when we were looking at the exhibit, you mentioned that that particular photograph was really important because El Aguila is currently still very, very known in Tampico after all these years. El Aguila became uh, the trademark uh, of choice in Mexico. They developed a very good image. You know, they established the company as a Mexican company, invited some uh, board members uh, to the company, and it, it just became part of Mexico. El Aguila in Mexico was part of the same thing, and uh, they employed a lot of people. So yes, some of the images depict, for example, the founder, Mr. Whitman Pearson from England, um, Mr. Everett de Gaulier, who is the father of American geology, who was an early ex explorer in Mexico and who found Potrero de Llano. Potrero de Llano was uh, the first big oil field in Mexico. That was a breakthrough for the industry because before that, you know, yeah, there were oil wells that produced enough oil, but this was just like huge oil. So that made Mexico into a major player worldwide. Mexico became an exporter of crude in 1911. That is exactly the, the, the day after Porfirio Diaz left Mexico, after the Mexican Revolution, Mexico started exporting crude. So, you know, these are key moments in Mexico's history. Many people don't know about these facts. 
And, and this exhibit, thanks to the city of Houston, is an opportunity for people to learn more and to look at some pretty rare images in the history of Mexico. Many people know about the boom in Mexican culture in the 20s, Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, but this is a different aspect of, of history. The oil industry used to employ thousands and thousands of Mexico. What I say, you know, everybody has a relative, you know, an uncle, a father, a grandfather who worked for El Aguila, for example. So these, we're talking about something that belongs to the, to the heart of Mexico. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, <laughs> because I was born in Tampico, right. and I saw some of the key buildings and some of the history. I lived through it. Can you tell us a little about the Tampico-Houston sister city relationship? The sister city between Houston and Tampico was established in, 19, uh, in 2003 after uh, the mayor of Tampico, um, you know, we submitted a proposal to city council uh, we demonstrated that there was an, an, an established relationship, trade with the, within the, the, the two ports of, uh, in Tampico area and the port of Houston. There was a trade, there was a, uh, an industrial uh, connection to Tampico. We had a daily flight. You know, we've had it for over 20 years now. It's a very profitable flight because many Houston companies have a representation office in Tampico or have a, a plant there. So we demonstrated that there was already a link between the two cities and, um, and because that's that's the, the the bottom line there is there is connection there is communication there is an exchange between the two cities now the association or the uh, establishment of a 501c3 gave us an opportunity to participate in um, business events and business activities in uh, cultural activities educational activities and even you know health and sports related activities. So uh, yes, it's a nonprofit organization. It handles our relationship with Tampico. But then again, we do everything in partnership with great partners like um, the the city of Houston and the Department of Cultural Affairs, led by uh, Minette Boisel. Thank you, Marco, for sharing this very important moment in our history. I'm sure all of our viewers love all this information and we thank you very much for watching us.